my honor to bring you greetings from Apostolic Assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ with Bishop Jerry O. Jones Sr. is my pastor. Amen. And it is an honor certainly to be here. My daughter is here, guys. So we raise your hand, sweetie. <laughs> she hates when I do that. Amen. And when they were younger, they didn't have a choice. Amen. She has a choice. But let's be clear, Tacola is the reason she's here tonight. <laughs> Not me. Amen. Um, she stopped that long time ago. Amen. But I'm always so honored when uh, she's able, any of my children are able to be with me. Created to Connect is your theme, St. John 15 and 5. Amen. We're also going to read, amen, the seventh verse as well. But this is fancy. Amen. Uh, I don't have this at my church, so I'm just going to look at the wall. Zoe, let's look at the wall. All right, let us read it together, 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 all connected and linked up. Let's read it together on three. One, two, three. Verse 7. Amen. And the topic that God has given me for tonight to go under your theme, your theme is created to connect. Amen. The topic is. Now, how does this work? I told you I'm not used to this fancy stuff. Do I say it and then it comes on the wall? All right. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Tomorrow I'll be ready. All right. Hey, hey. There you are. The subject is tell your neighbor, say you have one job. Just one job. Just one. Amen. On three, as loud as you can, use your outside voice and let's say what the one job is. One, two, three. Remain. Give God a hand praise. You may take your seat in Jesus' name. In the book of St. John is where your convention theme is found. It is the fourth book of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which we'll find in the New Testament. It is a very rich book the book of John, whose purpose is to prove conclusively that Jesus is the Son of God and that all who believe in him will have eternal life. John's gospel is a powerful, powerful argument of or for the incarnation, a conclusive demonstration that Jesus was, that Jesus is the very heaven-sent Son of God. And the only source of eternal life. Somebody say eternal life. In every chapter of this great, rich, powerful book, Jesus' deity is revealed. And John underscores Jesus' true identity through titles. And we'll read about it from chapter to chapter. He is given, amen, the, the, the affiliation as Jesus the Word. Jesus the only begotten. Jesus the Lamb of God. Jesus the Son of God. Jesus the bread of life. Jesus the resurrection. And amen, Jesus the vine. Did I miss it or did Melvin Campbell not sing it yet? Or did I miss the night he sang, stay in the vine? He didn't do it. All right. I can't use that in my sermon. Let me keep moving. And the formula is I am. When Jesus uses this phrase, he affirms his preexistence and eternal deity. Jesus says, I am in St. John, the sixth chapter, the bread of life. He says, I am in St. John, the eighth chapter, the light of the world. He says, I am in the 10th chapter, the gate. He says, I am in the 10th chapter, the good shepherd. He says, I am in the 11th chapter, the resurrection and the life. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life in chapter 14. And then your theme scripture in 15 and 5, he says, I am the true vine. And so here we are today with an assignment. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. 
And then it says in the Amplified, verse 7 reads as thus, it says, If you live in me and my words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts, guess what? You can ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. In the New International, verse 7 reads as thus, it says, If you remain in me and my words remain, Remain in you. Ask whatever you wish. And he can say that because if you remain in him, you're not going to ask something that is carnal. If you remain in him, he will give you how to pray and what to ask for. So his confidence in you can be seen in the scriptures that said all you have to do is remain. If you have lived the length of time any on this worldly earth and you have a cell phone and man, you've experienced the luxury of owning one, then you probably have received a notification via text or email uh, when you go too long without paying the bill. Now, if I was at my home church, I'd ask for a witness, but I'm amongst friends and I don't know most of you, so I'm not going to get in your business, but I'll use myself for an example. Is that all right? But if you can identify, you can sneak me an amen. And so the email warning or the text says your service is in danger of being disconnected. You can normally go a while. I can continue to talk. I can continue to, oh, some of y'all doing like this. Okay, thank you. I knew I had a witness. You can continue to talk. You can continue to text. You can post. You can, you can take pictures. But if that bill continues to go unpaid, one day, you're going to reach for that fancy phone of yours and you will not be able to get a connection to the person you'd like to be connected to. You may not be able to make a call, but you may be able to receive a call. It's doable if you happen to be around the phone when the call comes through, because if the call comes through, then you can say, hello, you can play it off, you can act like everything is good, because it happens in stages. If the bill continues to go unpaid, you won't be able to text. Before a season, you'll be able to receive a text. Just nod if you know what I'm talking about. And if the bill continues to go unpaid, you won't be able to make or receive a call. There will be no FaceTiming. There will be no Instagram. There will be no post. There will be no timeline checks. It begins to disconnect, 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 disconnect. You will become disconnected from the rest of the world. The people who had the resources to pay their bill and the people who had the discipline to pay their bill. Tell somebody next to you said there are levels to disconnection. Lord, have mercy. Is anybody taking notes today? There are levels to disconnection. I need two volunteers, and my friend was all up in the sermon today, so we're just going to go with it. Thank you, girlfriend. Where are you at? Confirming that message for me. Amen. Whoever you are, you can come as long as you know how to play Connect Four. Tell somebody next to you there are levels of disconnection. And that is the danger because sometimes if we're not careful, we'll think because we're able to operate, we'll think because we're able to do this and to do that, that we're okay when we have to be weary of the levels of disconnection. Now, back in my day, I too believe, I don't know what that young buck knew about Connect Four. Amen. But I know she has to be in Generation Z because she started talking about red and yellow pieces. Back from where I come from, how many of you all remember when the pieces were red and black? Okay, I'm not by myself. And so today when I went to the Campbell's home, the Lord just decided to let me know I wasn't altogether crazy. Melvin Jr. opened the door. He put away his coat. And lo and behold, I looked up and there was the Connect Four game. I said, oh, okay, all right, we in the book, we in the book, we in the book. Go ahead, you can commence to playing your Connect Four. The Connection. One of my favorite childhood games, I like trying to outwit my opponent. 
I like trying to put all the pieces together to see if I can get a connection. Now the person who was able to outthink the other person has the victory, as my friend said, and that is the person who wins. The one who is able to outstrategize the person is the one who wins. I quickly learned that when I would lose, it was because I became distracted. I simply learned that I needed mental discipline, are you with me church, in order to be a winner. It was the job of my opposer, the enemy, to block my every move. So don't get mad at the devil because he's blocking your every move. That is his job. Did somebody win? Okay. So you stand up. And you stand up too. Just because the enemy was successful at blocking a connection does not mean you are not meant to be connected. And the enemy is going to block as much as he possibly can because he doesn't want you to do the connecting. Some kind of way you're going to have to use strategies she started out one way, but when she went against her mental mindset, she realized that I'm going to have to go another way. I thought I was going to go this way, but I've got to go that way. I've got a back door. It does us no good to look and say, well, the enemy keeps coming, so I might as well just throw in the chips, throw in the towel, give up, and go somewhere else. You have to learn how to stay in the game because it's the enemy's job to block your move. And just because the enemy is blocking you doesn't mean you say, oh, I'm not supposed to be connected to Christ Temple Bloomington. But you've got to stay arc. You have to be accountable. You have to be. And you have to be. You've got to stay connected. Thank you. And show us your connect for. Where are you? Here? One, two, three, and four. Can you give these lovely, lovely, lovely ladies a hand? You have to be successful at blocking the enemy. Connecting is not always easy, but you just can't give up. I like one thing that I learned about Jesus even in this because he himself knew a man that he didn't want to be disconnected. And at first, he, uh, when he was in the Garden of Eden, he found himself feeling a little weary about the journey, feeling a little weary about carrying out his assignment. And the one thing that bothered him the most is that he didn't want to become disconnected from God the Father. Amen. He was able to endure everything else, the beating and being talked about and the whips and, and the false accusations and people going back. Those who said, Hosanna one minute and crucify him the next. But it was something about the thought of being disconnected from the source, being disconnected from God the Father that bothered him so much. He even thought, ah, if this cup could pass from me, I'd be okay at this point. But somehow with us in mind, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. He decided to go all the way to the cross, carrying our sins, paying the ultimate price because he knew if the price was not paid, mankind would forever be disconnected. And so he went all the way to Calvary. He went there and he fulfilled purpose. He hung there for six 
hours, three hours in total darkness. He became a landing post for all types of bugs and the blood that dripped down through the cross and the splinters and went into the ground. It was the blood that was so powerful that it was able to give us a connection, the option to be reconnected to Jesus Christ through him to the Father. Otherwise, the sin would have disconnected us forever. But thanks be unto God. God who gives us the victory. He sent his only son to pay the price so we could be forever connected. Created for connection. Ocean's Eleven. I don't know if there are movie buffs around here. But it was about a whole bunch of people that got together and they decided that they were going to come together and pull off one of the biggest heists in a Las Vegas casino. And they decided, amen, that everybody had a specialty. They decided that you'll be in charge of security and you'll be in charge of the plan and you, you'll be in charge of, of, of how we get in and get out the passports and such. Everybody had a specialty. And now here they are. They've made it all the way through. Amen. And now they're at the point where the vault is open. They're at the point where they can look right at the riches that they came to steal. They're right at that point and they get ready to cross over. And as soon as they crossed over, what happens? The sirens went off. They're caught. It's over. Everything that they had worked for is now a wash. Because here comes the feds, and they don't have enough time to get away. Don Cheadle turned around, and he looked at the people that were in charge of disconnecting the system security cameras, and he said, you had one job to do. He didn't cuss them out, although he probably felt like it. He didn't jump on them, although he probably felt like it. He just turned around, and even today, it's meme go, where he turned around and said, you had one job to do. Christ Temple Bloomington, I come to you today to remind you that you have one job to do. You don't have to worry about if the sun is going to remember to shine. You don't have to worry about if the birds are flying in the right direction. You don't have to worry about if the stars are going to fall out of the sky. You don't have to worry about how many angels can sit on the pin needle. You don't have to worry about if the oceans are going to overflow. Let God be God and do what God does best. All of this is his creation anyway. He said you have one job to do. Your job is to remain. Remain in my word. Remain in my word. Remain in my word. When you remain in my word, when you abide in my word, when you live in my word, you won't have a problem being accountable, responsible, or committed. When you remain in my word, I know your thoughts are far off. When you remain in my word, I know how to perfect that which concerns you when you remain in my word the bible says when you get ready to ask me for something you can ask me for it and it shall be done unto you tell somebody just one job when you remain you have a mind to witness when you remain, you have a mind to pray. When you remain, you have a mind to fast. When you remain, you have a mind to live holy. When you remain, you'll forgive quickly. When you remain, all you have to do is stay there. Stay connected. Stay in the vine. That's all you have to do. And God will do the rest. I love this one part and he told me, he said, now you take this to Bloomington with you. 
It's something that happened in Ohio a couple of weeks ago. I was in ministry there, but I didn't know the players. It was my first time. I didn't know who was who. And you know how you just kind of sit in that moment and you're trying to take it all in. And while I'm sitting there, Pastor Campbell, I noticed that there was one particular lady, a man who was sitting at the same table with me and someone ushered and they brought her a Dunkin' Donuts cup. I like Dunkin' Donuts. Amen. And I wasn't in the spirit yet, so I gave a little side eye like, well, how'd she get a cup of coffee? I wanted a cup of coffee too because it was cold in there. And so she had the cup of coffee and and she turned around because, you know, they tap you on the shoulder and she turned around and they brought her the cup of coffee and she smiled. She was like, ah. And I said, she didn't even want the coffee, but I wanted the coffee. And so she, she smiled and she looked all around the room and she was trying to put it together. I said, she don't even know who brought her the coffee. But she smiled and then she opened it up and I wasn't in the spirit yet. Okay, don't judge me. And she opened it up and she drank the coffee and she shimmied because it made her feel all warm inside. (laughs) And I looked, I said, oh, okay. (laughs) And God spoke to me in that moment. And he reminded me of it today. And then he said, just take a listen, a, a lesson at what you're seeing. There was somebody in the audience or somebody there that knew what she liked. There was somebody there who didn't need to ask her what it is that she wanted from the store. God says, Christ Temple Bloomington, I I am so impressed with you. I am so encouraged by what I see. I love what you've been doing for the last six plus, what, 13 years. And he told me to just give you this message. Because you all were that lady that got surprised with the cup of coffee. Amen. The scripture says it like this. It says, if you remain in me and my word remains in you you shall which is the future tense of your desire it says you shall ask what you will and it shall be given oh but the lord told me just two days ago he said but it didn't say you must ask it didn't say you had to ask he said so when you go to bloomington let them know that they've been remaining so well that they've been doing it so well that they've been living and they've been abiding and they've been dwelling so well that they don't even have to ask i'm in the mood to give them a surprise I'm in the mood to bless them with what I know they already want. He says, I'm in the mood now. A surprise is on the horizon. And you don't have to ask God anymore. He says, I know Bloomington what you have need of. He said, I know Bloomington how you like your coffee. He says, because I've been with you for a while. I've been laboring with you for a while. I've been in this thing with you for a while. I know how many cream i know how many sugars i know how hot you like it i know where you want it from and just like that lady you don't know when the surprise is coming but god told me as i was driving to work the surprise is coming you're gonna be minding your own business you're gonna be looking this way and somebody pastor they're gonna tap you on the shoulder and they're gonna give you a cup of coffee and you're gonna say oh yeah let me take it to the head and it's gonna be just the way i like it all you have to do is continue to remain remain for another year Remain for another year. Remain for another year. Live in God for another year. Witness for another year. Be accountable for another year. 
and see what God does. And then others are going to look at you and they're going to have their side eye like she did. And they're going to say, how did he qualify for that? How did they qualify for that? How is it that they were able to get that? I was cold too. I wanted coffee too. But God says, it is your season. God says, it is your time. God says, because you've been living, because you have remained, be it unto you according to your faith. All you have to do, all you have to do is remain. He said, make the first move and I'll make the next move. He said, if you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. He said, eyes have not seen. He said, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered and to the hearts of man uh, what he's prepared to do uh, he says I know the thoughts I have I know the thoughts I have I know the vision it is plain all you have to do is the one thing remain in my word remain in my will remain in my way I am the God I am the God who will deliver you out of the hands of the enemy all you have to do is remain oh yes one job to do and if there's anybody that can give God that kind of praise he said I'm in the mood to surprise you you don't have to tell me because I already know I was on my way here and my daughter was with me I said to her I said Zoe now what kind of snack you want before we get on the road she said I'm thinking Starbucks I said, I was thinking the same thing. We hadn't talked about your theme or my subject. She reached over to me and said, that's because we're connected. Is that all right? Is that all right? Can you go find somebody? And can you link up with them? And can you let them know that you just have one job to do? Can we touch Jesus together? Can you lift up your voice? Can you give God praise for the surprise that he's bringing your way? Can you say how much you love him? Can you thank the Lord tonight? Can you let him know how much you appreciate him? Oh, somebody. Hallelujah. Give God uh, praise for the surprise that's coming. He says, I already know your taste. I already know your preference because we've been hanging out for a while. You've been praising me for a while. You've been crying out for a while. You've been walking with me for a while. And with that kind of relationship, it shouldn't take you to get begged and pumped and primed to give God a praise. Why don't you give him something you know he likes? Why don't you give him something you know he likes? You know how he likes his praise. You know how he likes his worship. You know how he likes his reverence. Why don't you forget about yourself and bring God a cup of coffee? Can you surprise him with the after nine o'clock praise? Can you surprise him with something that you know he likes? Oh, lift up your heads, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting arms and let the king of glory let him come in come in come in come in come in come in hallelujah he said a surprise is coming because you have remained hallelujah oh hallelujah oh hallelujah Lord, we thank you for the benefits of being connected. And perhaps there is someone here. Hey, so